Yeah, it looks like a wiener, by the way. Monkey. He seems like he seems like one of those characters they designed to make you hate. He has a he, automatically right off the bat. You look at him and you're like, bad haircut. Automatically. Welcome to No Rest for the Wicked. This ARPG has been compared to things like Diablo and Dark Souls. And while I can definitely see small bits from each of those here, this game definitely comes in with its own charm and style that is really appealing. Currently, this game is still in early access, so there's a lot more to come through updates and future development, but I'm looking forward to everything that they come up with since this game has been a lot of fun. I wanted to go over some tips and general things to know for someone that is not used to difficult games or that is new to them. First and foremost, when you play something like this, you are absolutely going to die. Especially if you aren't particularly great at this type of game, what I'd recommend doing is taking fights a bit slower and learning enemy attack patterns, as the only progress you lose in this game on death is having to run back to where you were before, and some gear durability, which can be repaired quite easily and cheap in town, so I'd really recommend having the patience to learn the attacks, as the penalty here is very minimal. Next up is the parries. These are absolutely not something that is necessary for you to succeed. You can go the entire game without this and be fine, although I will say that if you can parry, you will be able to get more downtime from an enemy to score bigger hits, so if you have the patience, then go for it, but I wouldn't say it's a required skill to be successful in this game. Exploration is very important here. There are so many materials and pieces of gear that you can find throughout the world that are all really important and necessary. Gear most of all is randomly generated, so you may find something incredible where someone found something mediocre. This will also help you progress a bit better as you can have a chance to find some really decent gear that you wouldn't have otherwise or that you would have had to buy from one of the many merchants in town. You can find upgrade materials which will improve your gear as well from many of the enemies or chests that you loot and I would say this is going to be essential in making good progress while you're running around. While exploring you will also find resources to help build up the town, which I will talk about a bit later, but they will be required to fix or expand certain things within the city. The areas change as you go through the game, so if you have been through it once already, once you get a bit more progress you can revisit an area and there will be new enemies that you have encountered in other areas and new loot to find so going back to areas you've been before will definitely benefit you. Food is pretty useful here. In this game, you don't really have a rechargeable healing source, so scavenging and using fire pits to make meals will be essential for you to stay alive long term. Not to mention, when you do make certain meals, they also give you buffs to help you out in a fight, so they are something you are going to want to have on you at all times, and whenever you see a fire pit, I would recommend making what you can. Weapon variety and playstyles are plentiful in this game. You have things like one-handed weapons and shields, you can do bows, staffs for magic, and two-handed weapons, or even dual-wielded blades. There are many options in this game to choose from, so there will be no shortage of styles. Try alongside gear stats, which are all randomly rolled when you receive them or enchant them within town, so experiment. You want to find what works best for you. Initially, I tried a one-handed mace and shield combo and absolutely hated it. Felt very meh for what it offered for the way I like to play. Quickly, I found a merchant that would sell me other weapons, and I gravitated towards dual-wielding daggers, as I would like to try them. So, I liked them right away much better than my previous weapon choice. Normally, I like two-handed heavy weapon play styles in these types of games, but in this one, my perspective was absolutely changed. So I'd strongly suggest trying new things, especially things you may not have liked in other titles, as they can be a whole new perspective for your combat here. Next up, you have Poise. This is the stat that helps prevent you from getting knocked out of your attacks and even knocked down. Typically, you would want to build into this if you wanted to go for a heavier build, as the heavy armors usually have this in droves, and it helps you stay steady and not get staggered as much, but you also won't be as mobile in most cases. This game brings something called Icker in, which helps you upgrade your slots. This will be how you expand many things you can hold within a specific category. Typically, you get these from hard encounters or boss battles, so it's quite a nice reward. You have 8 options to choose from here. Gear, Inventory, Resource, and Miscellaneous slots, which will expand how much you can hold in each of those specific categories. Then you have more primary, offhand, rings, or tool slots that you can choose from, which gives you one additional of each. Personally, I went with more ring slots with my first one, but one thing I didn't realize would become more of a problem later in the game would be resources. Since the world is so full of these, it's very easy to stock up and get a full inventory of resources. This is one that I would really recommend putting one or two Icker into early on in order to not play inventory musical chairs all the time since storage isn't something that you have access to right away and resources usually come in high quantities. Next up, there are boss fights in this game, and while they may seem daunting at first, I'd recommend the same tactic you would use for general combat. Most of the early bosses in this game are relatively easy to learn, uh, they're moveset, so if you aren't able to get them the first try, definitely play it slow, and really pay attention to how they move and what attacks they are using, and you will definitely be able to get past them. 
Also, for many of them, it seems that there is environmental things that can get in the way of the fight. Those will get broken as the fight goes on, giving you more space to move around freely and allow for an easier time dodging, which can happen easier the longer you run a fight, or the more you bait out attacks in an attempt to learn how each move goes. This guy is the one I referenced earlier while being able to upgrade things within the city. You can upgrade things that make it easier to traverse inside the city like an elevator or fixing the stairs in your first temporary lodging, but you can also upgrade the shops and even build new ones that will offer you better things as you do so, as well as new things entirely to benefit you in combat and outside areas of the city. This is part of the reason I recommended upgrading your resource slots with Icar initially, because you will need a lot of wood and copper for these first few upgrades, and they will definitely help you out as you progress through this game. So check back here and look at some of the more important things that would benefit you, and focus on working on those first. I'd really recommend the stairs for the lodging or elevator for making travel up and down the city easier. The next thing I would really advise getting is the blacksmith upgrades or the enchanting, as they will offer more benefits to them when you do so, and this will make combat a bit easier to you if that is something you struggle with. Otherwise, like I said, definitely find what will benefit you most first, and start working on that, as you don't have to do them in any particular order. There is also bounties and challenges within the city that reset on a weekly and daily timer. Definitely pick these up as you frequent town as you can get gear or money from doing these tasks, which is a nice little boost as most of the tasks in here you would do passively anyways, so why not get extra tough for doing stuff that you are already going to do. Lastly, enjoy yourself. I have been having so much fun at this game and I think it's an incredible game overall. Not without issue of course, but still being in early access, this game is incredible and there's just more great things to come and I'm excited to see what future patches hold. Hopefully these things may have helped you out in starting within this game. If there is anything more you would like to see expanded on within this game, comment down below or let me know what your favorite part is. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.